and in general. But anyways, new head coach, Darko Ravakovic. Uh, I thought a lot of people assumingly were thinking about <laughs> Jokic just coming to Toronto. He's a Serbian head coach. Uh, what was it? Jordy Fernandez. We had <laughs> JJ Redick was in there. Uh, I don't think I don't know if that was ever actually going to happen. I'm really glad it wasn't. You had Coach Serbio. You had or Sergio. You had Coach uh, Kenny A. We talked about Kenny A. Uh, who else was in the running? I think a lot of people thought they were going to go jo- jo- Jordy, Sergio, or Kenny. But now looking back at it, it's like Kenny Atkinson coming back into the league. No, not quite yet. All right, that makes sense. Uh, I really like this trade or this hire. I really like it. So real quick, quick background on Darko's coaching career. He was a G League coach about a decade ago, actually now. So then he had stints on the staff of Oklahoma City Thunder. He was on Phoenix for a year. I believe it was only a year. And then he has been with the Memphis Grizzlies assistant coach for not good at math since 2020 however many years that is three four something like that never math's tough man right never been a head coach in the nba but what i think is interesting about this is you have the raptors are just in a weird stand point right now you have siakam uh you know is freddie gonna be the point guard next season but then we also have young town we have scotty barnes uh, we have a winning enough roster, which we saw them acquire Jakob Pertl. Okay. Well, so they missed the playoffs entirely. Jakob's a free agent. There's a bunch of guys who need to make decisions on Gary, Freddie. Are they going to go rebuild? What are they going to do here? Do they have a bench? Well... That's why, am I continuously voice crack? I lost my voice so badly this weekend, I, I guess. Anyways, development is something Nick Nurse, I feel personally, like since Kawhi Leonard was in town. When you win a championship, man, I don't care if Kawhi Leonard wins a championship and leaves. <laughs> the expectations on you as a franchise are to win a championship and to continuously win championships now. So it puts Nick Nurse in a weird stance where I don't think Nick Nurse, I think Nick Nurse can totally develop players. We've seen Nick Nurse develop players forever. But things change and priorities change. So there's no point in developing, you know, the 14th, 15th guy on your roster if I'm a winning team anymore. Now it becomes more of like, we need the right pieces around us. And over the years, we've seen the Raptors bench disintegrate. Now, I will say this. I think Darko's rapport across the league is, I'm going to assume, what do we know about the Toronto Raptors? They're a world-class franchise. The Toronto Raptors are a world-class franchise. We heard it with Justin Champagny. We've heard so many people come out of college and be like, like former Raptors players be like, yeah, I got drafted by the Raptors or they brought me in to, to sign with their team, un, undrafted free agent, whatever it is. And I knew that everybody wants to play for Toronto because they do such a good job at developing players. Well, so with Nick Nurse, after a championship, it becomes, shit, my bench is kind of disintegrating, but I need to keep winning championships. So Freddie... 42 minutes. Siakam, 43 minutes. New addition, Scotty Barnes, 44 minutes. All these guys are playing so much. Uh, I don't think they're going full rebuild here. I think this is going to be a quick tweak. I think he's a great developer of players. Like somebody said, Malachi Flynn here. I want to picture this real quick. Something I forget about all the time in 2020, college basketball and majority of college sports, because of COVID, they shut it down. There was no – Malachi Flynn was on San Diego State, right? So Malachi Flynn goes to Washington State and plays two seasons there. He's a solid freshman year. Then he goes into a sophomore campaign and kind of breaks away. So he transfers. He enters the transfer portal, misses a season because of the transfer portal at that time, and lands up at San Diego State. San Diego State in 2020 goes 30-2. and two. They go 30-2. and two. March Madness was canceled. So I'm Malachi Flynn. I've been I've been in college 
for several seasons. I played three full seasons in college. I've been at two different schools. I missed a whole year because of the transfer portal, and I just went 30 and fucking two. And the and March Madness is canceled. Can you imagine how that feels? Anyways, Malachi Flynn is a prime example of talent that they had that you know Malachi Flynn 40 to 60 games played a year he's going to catch some DNPs we saw him at the end of his rookie season start the last what was it 10 to 12 games did a phenomenal job averages like you know mid 15 points seven assists you know they draft Alano Banton basically the development from Toronto has just not it's become almost non-existent and you could also say, well, you could say they're not, Masai isn't giving him, Nick Nurse, the proper pieces to develop. Then, you know, it's like, well, we need to win championships, not develop my bench player, my, you know, 12th guy in my rotation, Delano Banton. I already have one backup point guard. His name's Malachi Flynn. There's so much that goes into like, like Masai, obviously you're tied up money wise. But clearly, the Toronto Raptors thought something of Malachi Flynn to have him for three years and then have, and then also draft Delano Banton. Like, they're seeing something in these practices where it's like a roster's fine. Anyways, I think having a guy like Darko now on the Toronto Raptors, I think it changes their future franchise. Because what did we see with Memphis in the last couple of seasons? Well, Memphis still has a good offense, Memphis has a group. Maybe not a great, you know, mastermind, one of the best offenses of, of ever. Let's go on stat views and look up what the Grizzlies offense was this past year. I'm like, I guess it was at least worst top 12. It was 15. All right. So never mind. That is pretty middle of the pack. Uh, let's go last season, 56 wins. They had the fifth best offense. We go to 2020 in his first year. They had the 15th best offense. Uh, there's top five in there. Anyways, I think Darko's the man for the job. I wasn't anticipating it, but I do think he – is good and i think he's been in he's been in the nba he's been in the association for so long now that you've built these connections you build these these relationships he's gonna come in he's gonna bring his guys on right bunch of open coaching spots on toronto he's gonna bring in his coaching staff they're gonna set it up uh but it is weird because toronto's in a standpoint where there's young talent on this team guys like scotty barnes nick nurse's offense at a lot of times was very confusing didn't seem like there was some consistency there you know i think for scotty barnes specifically this is a good move i don't think toronto's gonna blow it up i think they're trying to do a little bit of both here um because the draft is the money man that's how like toronto was kind of built 